she had us, both of us, absolutely round her finger. Fundamentally, she achieved this through the way that she looked at us. It shouldn't have been a surprise that the way she moved her head to one side, she'd leave me basically on my knees or more akin, I should say, to a slightly tepid pool of just water. But what was more surprising was the effect it had on him. Anything she wanted, he gave to her. Anything she demanded, he agreed to. And, and he agreed to everything with this same little smile on his face. The smile of a man who, in actual fact, was little more than four years old. I'm not saying I wouldn't have done the same and more in his position. It just seemed in some ways more, what, downright surprising coming from him? He wasn't that kind of a man. He was, this, he was a soldier. And when I say was, I, I mean was, I mean he, he used to be. Between 1968 and uh, 1984, he was a soldier in the British infantry. He reached the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. He did five tours of Northern Ireland. And this was when, you know, doing a tour of Northern Ireland was more than just a few games of pool and a chat with some kids outside of a fish and chip shop. Some of the photographs he took. He used to have this, um, this Polaroid camera. And some of the things that after he'd had a few drinks, he'd get out of his box to show me, you know. He wouldn't have thought that they were of Northern Ireland. There, there was something about them that I found in some ways surprising. He always refused to talk about South Georgia. Never mentioned it. I asked him about it once and his face turned within a matter of a few seconds, literally grey. Slate grey. And even after he eventually retired from the army, he retrained as a, as a, as a maths teacher, for Christ's sake. I would have liked to have seen him teach. I can imagine the kind of teacher he was. I, I don't think he would have worn many cords. I don't think he would have shared many coffees with the sixth formers. Come and play with me. Read me a story. Can I sit on your lap? Where's Grandpops? Oh, there he is. Not his kind of scene, you know, but, but he did it with her. The first thing I learned about photography, I learned when I was a kid. If you're taking a portrait photograph, if you possibly can, then take it from below the subject. It, it renders the subject, actually, oddly, what it does is, is it renders them not more heroic, not more godlike. Oddly, it renders them more human. Um, and if you can take it in natural light, if you can capture the way the light falls at the beginning of or at the end of a day especially, then it can be... He used to try to convince me that the um, existence of the... the existence of the, the, the understanding of the uh, relevance and possible uses of the irrational number which is commonly and internationally and historically known as pi that is the five decimal places the number 3.14159 was irrevocable proof of the existence of god <laughs> it's just so illogical he told us that it, that it could ever work that it must just prove that there's something more than us and it's so incredible that we can discover it and, and, and that proves something. I think he's wrong. <laughs> I told him, I think you're wrong. I told him, Arthur, for someone so palpably intelligent, sometimes you think like your head's full of wool. He liked me. He never got too cross. We'd talk about beer together. He never bothered about my being from... He watched an unusual amount of tennis. Everything was tennis with him. His, his conversation was, was peppered with tennis metaphors. Sometimes we watched tennis together. I never liked it much. Is it a terrible thing to say that sometimes the company of men could be in some ways kind of comforting. I don't mean that to sound, you know, 
Um, I don't mean anything other than... He had a house in the eastern suburbs of Toulon, in a town called Carcarin, in the south of fucking France, for fuck's sake. <laughs> when I go there with Helen, and for the first time we, we drive in her car, She's kind of a mix between being a bit embarrassed because, you know, ostensibly at least at the time, we're kind of what? Socialists. <laughs> and just being really fucking proud because her dad has a house in the south of France and, and she's taking me there and, and she's paying for the ferry because I'm skint. She keeps going on about how odd he is, but how she has a feeling that she thinks I'll like him. And I do. She says that's one of the things she likes about me. I like people. People like me, they think I'm gentle. Now, I had absolutely no idea that people thought I was gentle. And she says, she says she really likes this bit. This bit is one of the best bits of a man, she says. <sighs> Which is a phrase that just about sends me completely insane with love for her and her nose and her smile and everything. When Helen was in labour, um, there was a moment when I thought she could have died. And it's a bit embarrassing um, because I had to go to the toilets to change into my, um, what are they called? My scrubs? Is it I had to go to the toilets to change into my scrubs? Uh, and when I did, I did have a bit of a cry. And I did ask God, who I don't fucking think is even there in the first place, to make sure that Helen was all right. I said we could survive if we lose the baby, but I just don't think I could make it if she went and died on me. It's like looking at a photograph or talking to a photograph or, or, or the mirror. It, it has the same effect. Which isn't to discount it completely, um, but it's not God. The second time I go to his house after we've been going out for two years now, he asks me if I want to come diving. He's become a big fan of scuba diving in the 18 months that we've been going out, which is maybe a surprising character development in a man of his age, but <laughs> he's a surprising man. And between Saint-Tropez and the Ile de Porquerel, he tells me there are actual shipwrecks you can actually dive on. Would I like to come? I've never worn a wetsuit before, and it takes me longer to get into than I'd hoped, and it, and it makes me feel a bit um, fat. <laughs> he tells me he's going to take me to the seawall. Ask him the what? He says the seawall. This makes no sense to me at all. Well, there's a wall in the sea. <laughs> it, it drops down. Hundreds of feet. You know, I had no idea that the, the bed of the sea was built like that. I thought it was more of a gradual slope. And he's brought these little bags with um, bits of bread in and you, you hold them upside down to swim with. So you don't lose the bread because it naturally floats upwards. Um, and he takes me to the wall. And swimming there with the sun, even as bright as it is above us and it is a bright day, even then the darkness of the fall that the wall in the sea reveals is as terrifying as anything I've seen. You get back to the surface, of course, and the idea that there ever wasn't a sea wall there in the first place is <laughs> kind of a bit embarrassing, frankly. I mean, what did I think the seabed was actually made of? When, um, <clears throat> when Helen's giving birth to Lucy, the midwife calls to me. Daddy, you want to see your baby born? They've built a little tent. 
look over the edge of the tent and I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people who I never know where to look when someone points something out to me. Like, I'm a kid. Um, I'm driving along and mum says, look, a kestrel. <laughs> or oh, look, a plane. And you know, I haven't got the faintest idea what to look at. I just smile and nod dumbly and say, oh yeah. <laughs> but I'm completely lying. This is a bit like that. Mainly, I just see the yellow of the inside of her stomach. Once you've seen the insides of somebody's stomach, I think your relationship with that person probably then moves to what? A new level. I love her. Completely. With every bone and bit of skin of me. And it's been rare the times in our relationship when she's cried and I've comforted her. I'm fucking crying all the fucking time. <laughs> I can't watch an episode of ER without just being a wreck. I cry at ground force when a person comes back and they've had their garden done up as a surprise. We go there to his house for our holidays every year. We did used to drive. Uh, three years straight we drove all the way down from London without stopping. We took it in turns driving. We kind of promised to share navigating, but neither of us really needed any help. We did it fine. After Lucy was born, we started flying there though, because like the, 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 the driving's not fair on a baby and, and she'd buy the tickets for us. Um, he'd buy the tickets for us. Um, <clears throat> you can get flights to, to Carcassonne for dead cheap, but he'd pay for us to fly into Nice. And he'd hire us a car at the airport. When we got there. When he sees her, and for the first time, um, he takes her by surprise a bit. He looms over from behind her and he's, he's wearing his glasses, his big old glasses, and he's a very, very tall man. And, and he takes her by surprise and, <laughs> and she screams like living shit. <laughs> Believe me. It took her about three weeks to recover from that, but... She did. And she starts with the shuffling across the floor to reach him, and putting her arms up and making these little noises that basically mean, put me on your lap and read me a story, you funny old fucker. <laughs> I don't care if you're meant to be weird. I don't care if you're meant to be scary. I don't care what anybody fucking thinks about you. I just want a story and I want it now. Who could resist that? She starts wearing cardigans, and that's me done for. One time I say to him, I say, if there's a God, if, is he a man? And the question takes him by surprise a bit, but after a while he says that yes, in the end he thinks God is probably a man. So I say to him, what does he look like? Does he have a beard? <laughs> does he wear robes? Does he have long white hair? And he says to me that the thing about God is that whatever I think he looks like, well, then it'll look like the exact opposite to that. And whatever I think he's least likely to look like, then that's what he'll look like. So I ask him if he means God looks a bit like Gary Glitter. And he tells me not to be so bloody silly. <laughs> So I, so I say to him, you know, if you can't tell me what he looks like, if you don't know what he looks like, if he doesn't look like anything, then how do you know he's anything more than just something you've made up? You know, just an idea. We talk for years about having a second child, but every time we, we talk about it, we just think about Lucy. We just think, you know what? We're very happy. She's just, 
just want her. She's clever. She's funny. She's very, very pretty. She's Helen's sidekick. She's my sweetheart. They make little wise cracks about me, the two of them stand there sizing me up, but I know if they take it too far, then she'll come running over to me and, and put her arms around me because the idea of properly making me sad makes her feel a bit sick. In the eight years since she's been born, I've fucked a lot of things up, but somehow managed by the skin of my teeth to come out largely unscathed. And me and Helen, we're doing okay. We have these little routines, like, like with the dishwasher, um, or with the shopping, or the cooking, which I really love to do, but compared to her, I'm shit at it. Uh, so when she cooks, it's properly a treat. It's like, we have these little routines, but we fucking love them. <laughs> Instead of finding them, what? Restricting. Sometimes, um, when you swim, the force of the waves can crash against you. It can knock you over. There have been times when just trying to get out of the sea, I've been knocked over. Two years ago this happened, um, and I cracked my coccyx against a stone on the, sh on the shore's edge and, and then flailed around like some kind of huge seal. <laughs> I was in that moment the um, mathematical polar opposite of Daniel Craig. Normally the water's not like that there, um, where he is. The water's warmer, which is quite an unusual feeling for me. Um, I always swim out as far as I think safe, and then turn and, and swim another ten strokes and then stop and swim back. Sometimes you think the tide's caught you. You panic because you think you're not moving. You are. You just need to turn on your back. Collect your breathing. Kick slowly. You're moving. One time I say to him, where is he? And he says, who? And I say, God, where is he? Is he in the sky? <laughs> That's what people used to think he was. Children and medieval people. Is he on the edge of our solar system? Is he on the edge of our galaxy? Because every time we think we've located where he must be, then we find out something else. And we realise that he, oh, he can't be there. Is he 15 billion light years away? On the very edges of the universe and the parts of the universe that take on the form of the time of the Big Bang that have that kind of density. Is he there? Is that where he is? He says to me, he says, Alex, we don't know everything. There are some things we don't know. There are some things we can't explain. I tell him now. He says, what? I say, we can't explain them now, but that doesn't mean they don't have a reason. It just illustrates the gaps in our knowledge. It doesn't mean we won't be able to explain them one day, because really, because I think we will. Um, I want... I, 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 want, I want to acknowledge something, um, and it's embarrassing because it's probably something you will have noticed. I have a hole running right through the middle of me. You must have all felt a bit awkward because you can probably see it, even in this light. Mostly people choose not to talk about it. Some people tell me that they're sorry, but that yes, they can see my hole. 
What's that, Alex? They say you seem to have a great big hole running right through the middle of you. I'd, um, I started doing okay, you know, I got a, uh, it sounds stupid, I got a contract um, with British home stores. I took the photographs for their catalogues and for their websites. Men's wear, women's wear, the back to school stuff, the homeware. I made so much money taking photographs of cushions and saucepans and digital alarm clocks that I can barely believe it myself. Five weeks ago, and just before we go, uh, just before the packing and you know the frantic stuff about what we're going to take, Helen's buying some stuff to take with us. She's got Lucy, all of her new stuff. Her dresses and her cosy and her books and toys for the flight. She's got me these shades, which are properly pucker. Seriously, very poncherella from Chips. Um, and she asked me to come into the bedroom because there's something she wants to show me. She's wearing this dress. It's a blue dress um, with this drop back. She asked me to tell her what I think. I swear for about 30 seconds I couldn't speak. She looked. <laughs> And the idea that I was married to her <laughs> and that we had our kid and that this was, was our life. Mm. There's a man um, at the market at Port Grimaldi on the second day who sells us a case of claret for the equivalent of about 15 quid and it is like heaven. We drank two bottles of it on our second night there. The next day, um, Helen has to go to the supermarket because we need to get some bread uh, and some shampoo for Lucy and I need some uh, athlete's foot cream. <laughs> and we love, they have these little yogurts, these little pots of vanilla flavoured yogurt that you can't get in Britain. And she wants to get some cheese. Um, it's fun to go to the market, but as it, as it goes, it's a bit of a rip off. Um, so she wants to go to the supermarket, <laughs> which is where most of the French people go you know, anyway. So uh, me and Arthur go down with Lucy, down to the beach. And there's this bay right by his house. And around the corner from the bay, there's this cove you can actually climb onto, and when the bay is busy, you can go to this cove. It's actually nearer his house, and it's um, more secluded. It's very quiet and lovely, and we talk about it. We decide to go there. She can go into this world. Did you ever know any kids like that? That when she thinks nobody's watching, she can just start off going further and further into her imagination, playing all by herself. Actually, what she's really doing is she's talking to herself, which um, some people might find a bit disconcerting, but I just love to watch her. He says to me one time, he says, he's in the feeling of water. Sometimes there's the, the shape, the role of land. He's in the way some people move. He's in the light falling across a city at the start of an evening. He's in the space between two numbers. You want to know what the cruelest thing I ever did to somebody else was? I'll tell you. I'd, um, I'd started getting into detective fiction. I have a friend who works at St Mary's University and he said to me, Alex, all fiction is detective fiction. It's completely wrong. 
Jane Austen's not detective fiction. Franz Kafka is in detective fiction. Bridget Jones is in detective fiction. Detective fiction is detective fiction. James Elroy. Arthur's uh, gone for a swim. I'm reading L.A. Noir, uh, the bit where the cop and the killer are uh, sitting in the car park, meeting at midnight with the lights off, uh, each of them wondering whether the other's there. Um, Lucy's sort of being a Power Ranger. The sun is gorgeous. I've got my shades on, it's so bright. Comes back. The water's amazing, he says. He dries off, and I am. Um, I notice his feet. The skin on his feet is unusually battered and cracked. It's one of the moments you kind of rumble that he's a little bit old. He tells me I can go for a swim. I do. The water is amazing. I wade past the first bank. I get past all the seaweed and I swim out and out and out around the bay and the light. At that time of day, light on the Mediterranean is and the sea's warm. Turn around. I'm about 20 yards out. The sky is this huge blue curve. I can see all the houses. On top of the road, I can see his house. I can see the children swimming around the bay. I can see Arthur sitting reading. He's reading some history of China. He's really into it. His towel draped across his legs water dripping onto his book and I, I can see Lucy playing behind him, running around a bit, playing Power Rangers. And I can watch them as she does a little bit of a fall. And it's odd because he's so into his book that he doesn't notice that she loses her footing on the sand and the gravel of the rocks and she slips and stumbles. And she's quite close to a little edge of one of the rocks there and what she does is she tries to correct her balance but in trying to correct the balance of her weight she actually puts more weight on her back foot which slips out from underneath her and it's weird to watch because she actually falls off this six foot high cliff um, on the rocks and she falls backwards and she cracks her head on some rocks which are jutting out on the on the cliff below. I can see it all clearly uh, but I can't really hear anything and it's weird watching it with no sound like if the sound's off on the telly it's always a bit weird. I'm not really thinking, um, so I start swimming faster and faster, and I'm panicking. And when you're panicking, you can't really you can't really concentrate on your breathing. So I have to tell myself, you know, concentrate on your breathing. I can sort of watch him uh, between strokes, and he's uh, thrown his book down, um, and he's jumped off the cliff. And there's this one other couple that I hadn't noticed before, um, and they stop their sunbathing and run towards where she is. And I notice him pick her up. He's torn between running back to the house to call an ambulance and waiting for me. I get there in enough time for him not to have to worry about this for too long. I go to him. I take her from him. There is, what there is which surprises me is there is a handful of blood in her hair thick and it's matted and her hair's all chewed up by it. I read that it's a process, that it's never absolutely instantaneous. The injury causes the death of brain cells so that uh, signals are no longer sent to the lungs and bit by bit the machine breaks down. Her, her blood sticks to my hand. I carry her up the path of the cove and I haven't bothered getting dried off and people are looking at me. 
stopping still in their tracks and talking to me in French. And I'm kind of aware that I'm, I'm, I'm not crying. I look like, um, fuck, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I get, uh, going to the house with her and, and as I'm, as I'm getting through the sliding glass doors, I bang her head on the wall and I'm talking to her, which is stupid. And I tell her that I'm sorry for banging her head, but there's a part of me that's just thinking, you know what, <laughs> fuck it now. What does it fucking matter now? I, I may as well drag her by a fucking ankle. This, this, this bit of meat. This bit of, of meat and, and air. I remember uh, I was a bit astonished because one of the ambulance men spoke, spoke in English. Quite good English. I remember he lived in Southampton and, and, and I, I, I was thinking, why the fuck do you live in Southampton? Of all places. The sound of Lucy closing the door with her bag full of yoghurt and shampoo and bread and cheese takes me completely by surprise. She looks at me across his house. She's wearing sunglasses to protect her against the light. Oh, Jesus fuck. He's sitting on his sofa, his towel still wrapped around him. He is a man that is completely broken. He's a shattered form. The little noises he makes. As I leant over Checking desk at Nice. Um, we, uh, we've been taken to the front of the queue and we've actually been, been given an upgrade. And the lady, you know, she's sorting all this out. And I um, look over her, the, the sheet on her desk. There's this list of the passengers and the crew and the baggage. And at the bottom of the lift, it says human remains. Which was a bit. We're sitting there, um, the three of us in the departure lounge. We can't really look at one another or anyone else, and we can't touch one another. I turn to him. And, and, and this is the cruelest thing I ever did to anybody else. And, you know, don't forget this is a man, you know, who I've, I've known for, for 10 years. And I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I do. <laughs> I, I love him. Look at him. I say to him, <sighs> you get back to London and the noise of it all and the dirt and the colour and the roar of it. I can't actually, what I can't really do, for now at least, is work. There's a lie at the heart of photography that I've always cherished. 
When you're taking a photograph, what you're doing is you're freezing something that's actually alive. To do this properly, you need more than anything to believe in life. There's a child laughing outside. And in his laughter, there is absolutely no joy, humour. Warning, this vehicle is reversing. I, I have a complete and, and, and total inability to cry. You see people sometimes when they tell you that they can't imagine not believing in anything because it would just be too depressing. I think there's something so sick about that. The level of cowardice in that is just, it's just unbearable to me. I've been home now for three weeks. If this can happen, anything can happen. Just now, um, there was this, uh, this couple um, and they were rowing in the streets and it seemed like they were deliberately trying to copy characters out of soap operas in the way that they argued. <laughs> As though the closest they'll ever get to being famous is, is rowing in the streets like they were actually on EastEnders. And the misery and the emptiness and the vacuous fucking shitness of their lives it is so considerable that, 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 that just by emulating the behaviour of, of these soap opera characters is some kind of consolation. Helen moves around the house. I'm keeping my entire head together. The skin and the shell of me. I'm falling absolutely inside myself. But you can see that. You can see that in my Just because we don't know doesn't mean we won't know. We just don't know yet. But I think one day we will. Um, I think we will.